Hi, we're Kelly and Kevin. We're currently exploring Wyoming on a 12-day road trip in a rented Traveler's Auto Barn camper van. We're visiting Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks, all while enjoying our first van life experience. Greetings from very cold Yellowstone National Park. We were up before the sun yet again today, trying to do some more wildlife spotting. We've come down to the Hayden Valley, which is another kind of hot spot for wolves and bears. Now we had heard about a week and a half ago that a grizzly bear had made a kill on the other side of the Yellowstone River from the road, and it's been feeding on this elk kill for that amount of time so we decided to get up very early and come here to see if we could see it. It hasn't come down for breakfast yet though although we can see the ravens scavenging so we do know that there's something still there so I think we're just gonna wait it out and see if the big guy will uh, come down to to make a show. <laughs> And we made it back to the van. Oh sh <laughs> There he goes. One of the cool things about this van is that you can make breakfast with bison outside. I could get used to this. Unfortunately, we did not see a bear today. Wah, wah. No bears. We waited out there in the cold for a little while and then we came back to the van and ate breakfast. And then we went back for a little longer, but still nothing. So we decided we were gonna go since today is our last full day here in Yellowstone, unfortunately. So we are just on our way to the Old Faithful area because there's tons of colorful pools and geysers and all kinds of good stuff that we can see over there. Yeah, I think we're gonna get up close and personal with some really cool hot springs. So stay tuned for that. It's about an hour drive and we will get back to ya. We've got another wildlife jam. What is it? What is it? Last night the wildlife jam was just a herd of elk that was really far away. I'm not super optimistic, but hopefully it'll be something good. Traffic is way backed up. So we have found the culprit of the wildlife jam. There are a bunch of buffalo that are just walking right down the middle of the road. So nobody can pass them because they're just as big as the vehicles. Thank God we finally got past that buffalo. It was just strolling down the middle of the road for miles and miles, but we're through it. And now we're gonna go see some cool geysers and hot springs. We've just stopped at, I think this is Fountain Paint Pot something. It's the first one we came to, so we're gonna go check it out. First, it's time to mask up. So if you want Yellowstone in a nutshell, definitely come to the Fountain Paint Pots area. It basically has one or more of every type of geothermal feature that Yellowstone has to offer. There are boiling mud pots, there are geysers, there are steam pools. Whatever Yellowstone has, you can find them here. Of course, there are lots of other places to see cool ones, but if you're in a rush, come to Fountain Paint Pots. So the reason that Yellowstone is so geothermically active is because it is a gigantic supervolcano. So we're in the area right now that is part of the caldera, 
or the center of the volcano and that's why there are so many geysers and mud pots and all these different thermal pools and things like that. It's the largest super volcano in the world. If you guys saw the movie 2012. <laughs> That is actually quite accurate, and it would be pretty scary if that erupted. They do have a lot of earthquakes here, but there hasn't been a big one in about 70 years, which might mean that they're due for a big one. This is a little scary. Almost got you, Kel. Okay, we've taken off and we are on the hunt for more geysers and thermal pools. Okay, we're at our next geyser spot, but it's about lunchtime, so we're making lunch in the van. We're all done eating lunch and now we're about to go explore some more thermal pools and whatnot. Um, one good thing about renting a camper van during COVID times is that number one, there's like no place to eat in Yellowstone. I mean, there are, but they're few and far between. So you, you can just pull over and make yourself a meal so you have all your food with you. And number two, since it's COVID, like we can stay away from the crowds. We don't have to go into crowded restaurants or be around people waiting for takeout or whatever. We just pull over, cook our food, we're in the van, we're isolated. So thank you Travelers Auto Barn for making that happen for us. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we parked at Biscuit Basin. We walked across the street because we're trying to find this pool or geyser that we found last time we were here. It was this very blue pool and it made this thump. You could feel it underneath your feet. It, it actually vibrated the earth. So we're trying to find that pool. It's definitely less popular. There's not even a boardwalk. It's just kind of a trail. So we saw this sign that there's been a bear in the area recently. So Kevin ran back to get our bear spray just to be safe. We're gonna be making lots of noise as we hike. Hope we don't have a really close encounter, but I'd still like to see a bear from a far distance. So we'll see. Okay, as an illustration of why across the street from Biscuit Basin is awesome is that there's nobody here, but there's no boardwalk here. There's just a couple of rocks. Yeah, you can feel the heat and the steam coming off of the sun. It's so pretty. Of course, if any area is marked as closed or dangerous, we do not go in that area, but this is not marked as closed or dangerous. So obviously it still is dangerous. So we're gonna keep back from it. We're not touching the water obviously, but I just really wanna make that a point. So across the road from Biscuit Basin is where you wanna go if you wanna get away from the crowds for sure. Some of these pools are really, really deep and it's just super cool to see how clear everything is. Like, you can see all the way to the bottom in every single one of them, if there isn't steam coming up, that is. But yeah, it's a great little hiking trail. Looks like we've reached the end of the hiking section and where the boardwalk begins at Morning Glory Pool. You can take that all the way to Old Faithful. I don't think we're gonna do that right now though. Morning Glory was awesome. I've been wanting to photograph that pool for a while now, so I'm really glad that we made the hike out to do it. What'd you think? Gorgeous, as always. I always forget, I've been to Yellowstone 
probably half a dozen times in my life and every time I'm like, yeah, I want to go to Yellowstone. But I forget how awesome it actually is. You get here and it's just like, how is this real? It makes sense why they made it a national park. But now we're going to head back to our car and continue to a few more iconic sites. <laughs> All right, our next adventure is Grand Prismatic Spring. It is north of Biscuit Basin, not that far. It is definitely a must see when you come to Yellowstone. What did you think of Grand Prismatic Spring? It was sweet. A little crowded, so just be aware of that. The last time we were here, we did a hike and kind of got up above it, and I think that's the way you want, really want to see it. That's where the better view is. Yeah, there's a viewing point. Um, I think if you hike along the Ferry Falls Trail, that'll give you a nice view of Grand Prismatic. And now we're lost in the woods trying to get back to our car. Kevin's leading us astray. Ye of little faith. But where's our car? It's over here. We're still on the hunt for the pool that thumped the ground underneath us. We were on the wrong trail before, but we think we found the right trail. Because we are out of the more well-traveled areas, uh, we are being safe. We have our bear spray ready, just in case a worst case scenario happens. Um, but a good way to avoid scaring a bear when you're in this type of situation is make a lot of noise. So you can yell, hey bear, like Kelly's been doing. Hey bear, here bear, here bear. Does that work? Where are they? So we finally made it to the thumping pool that we've been talking about all day long. It's called Black Sand Pool. It's away from the main boardwalks of Black Sand Basin. It's actually, again, across the road. We like to find these places across the road because there's nobody here, as you can see. You kind of have to stand on the south side of it. That's where, I guess that's where the chambers are. But every couple of minutes, there's this dunk, dunk. And it's, I guess, the gas being released because then just like 30 seconds after that, it starts to really bubble up. So it's really cool. It's like you can feel it under your feet vibrating yeah. and it's like the power of the earth. Yeah, you can definitely just stand here and feel it and it feels like somebody's shutting the door of the house or something. It's just loud like boom, right underneath your feet. Something we find interesting. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Maybe it's nerdy, but we think it's neat. I like it. And plus there's nobody here. We don't have to contend with anybody. Yeah, that's good. So we like that. I guess this is why they call it black sand pool. Because there's just what looks like black sand everywhere. Did you feel that? We walked back to the parking area side of Black Sand Basin and came just in time to see the cliff geyser erupt. We have saved the classic for last. We are headed to Old Faithful before we get the heck out of Yellowstone. All right, we made it to the Old Faithful parking lot, which is huge. It's like 10 times the parking lot of any other place in Yellowstone. We're gonna head over to the, there's like a geyser countdown kind of timer thing. See what time it's supposed to go off. I believe it goes off every hour or just about that. That's why it's called Old Faithful. <laughs> you know, give or take, whatever mother nature feels like. In 
anticipation is killing us. It teased us a few minutes ago, but it said give or take 10 minutes, so we're still, we're still waiting. It's quite the crowd here now, though. Now, since it's getting kind of late and we have a long drive ahead of us, we're just going to get food at the Old Faithful cafeteria and go and eat it in the van because there's no dine-in right now. And then start heading south. Our destination is back in Grand Tetons tonight. We got our to-go food from the Old Faithful Lodge, a couple of barbecue sandwiches, and we're going to eat just in the parking lot here. Good morning. So last night we totally forgot to film a sign off because we had kind of a long drive after Old Faithful and we got into our KOA campsite pretty late. So we kind of just showered and then went to sleep. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. It really, really, really helps us and lets us uh, create more of these awesome videos for you. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. This is Kelly and Kevin from The Awkward Tourist. Peace out. What did you just get scared by, Cal? A squirrel. It ran real fast, okay? So the reason that Yellowstone is so geo... Thermically? Geothermically? Geo... Geothermically? Is that a word? I'm trying to do something. I'm, I'm vlogging right now, okay? I'm trying to do something. Ah! So, we, oh my god, cut. This guy. Are you ready yet? Yeah. Let's go. Just putting on sunscreen. Gosh, what a diva. Look at the geyser. It's geysin. Such a geyser. Look at you geysin, geyser. Such a geyser. Geyserino. Just geyserin, aren't ya?